Good day, uh, my name is Ivan Perich. I'm the producer of the film uh, directed by Bruno Pavic called uh, Landscape Zero. We developed this film at Ex Oriente workshop and the film is just finished like a few weeks ago and now we are looking for a place to have our premiere and distributor and uh, sales agent. So, uh, the Landscape Zero is an observational style documentary film. It's also actually hybrid, hybrid uh, because uh, it uh, combines uh, the fiction and documentary, but everything is uh, uh, made uh, like uh, it looks like observational style documentary. So, uh, the film is placed uh, in the specific area near the city of Split, which is polluted. And it's a touristical place, so, uh, actually, in Rudolf history, it's polluted and devastated by factories and uh, other uh, facilities. Uh, so, the film uh, shows four protagonist characters, uh, they are living uh, near those facilities and they are trying to survive. So, many, uh, some of them are activists, but their activism comes from need to survive, not uh, from politics and uh, I don't know. So they are real activists. So we are. At the, this is a silent film. We are just watching their their lives. They have they begin, middle, and the end. They are want to make something, and they are uh, they are uh, working to do some kind of goal. Uh, so uh, other layer is uh, our performers. Uh, some uh, performances. They are put in between sequences uh, to connect uh, those places, those facilities, and they are uh, creating somehow. Uh, somehow this surrealistic world uh, more to look like more surrealistic and they are, they are, they are telling us something, some kind of messages, those performers. And, uh, and third, uh, third um, uh, layer are uh, real people who are swimming there like tourists, uh, it's observational style, uh, classical. So uh, we combine those three layers and we have this um, I like to say, uh, the, my intention was to make audio, uh, film with audiovisual pleasure, that the viewer can watch this strange world and uh, enjoy picture, enjoy sound image, and uh, to uh, make uh, his uh, conclusions about uh, this world, uh, to uh, not just uh, that we are putting uh, some message. And uh, so this is, was the idea. This was the idea. Uh, thank you very much for watching. We really hope that you, uh, you will enjoy our film. Thank you. Hi guys, my name is Katja Zaitz, I'm director of project Everybody is Okay. This story is about an old shepherd Ramazan who has Alzheimer's. His last link to reality is his roots, everyday roads of his hometown that he walks. 
but the town itself is becoming a bottom of a huge water reservoir. Throughout 2020, waters of Tigris River are flooding Hassan Cave, a city which is 12,000 years old. Actually, there is no such place as Hassan Cave anymore. It is 100 meters deep under the water. You will never see the city, and it is kept only in photos, videos, or memories. Memory of the place, memory itself, is the main topic of this film. In Everybody is Okay, we are using non-linear structure to explore the nature of memory. Ramazan, conversations with his friends and family, his long walks, his uh, strange uh, behavior when he uh, throws rocks, or he, in the moments when he's completely lost due to his illness, all this gives us plenty of possibility to mix past, present and future until the moment when Ramazan is transferred to the new place, until the moment when both men and the city forget who they are. To us, the story has started with a car crash in eastern Anatolia. We were driving around Hassan Cave with local guide. He was singing Kurdish songs. I started to shoot him and then he hit a horse on a hill after a turn. And nobody knows why the horse was staying there, but any, anyhow, the car soared in the air, turned upside down and crashed. And after we got out of the car, we continued to shoot because that was the only thing that we could do. And uh, some time after it, we realized that this is the scene with which the project starts because it was a very precise metaphor of what was going in Hassan Cave, a killing of a white horse with a machine, so to say. And only sometime after, when we found Ramazan, we found out that his youngest son was killed in such an accident. And this gave all this car crash story another dimension. Now I'm giving word to our producer. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Anastasia Ritsina. I am a creative producer in the documentary film department of the Gorky Film Studio. We want to make not only good films, but important films. One of these projects is Everybody is OK. Our team has put great effort in this project, but now production stage is almost completed. The film crew has visited Hesse Cave six times during the past two years and will go on another last expedition in September. Uh, now we are looking for pre-sales for European broadcasters and post-production facilities, such as color grading, graphics, including cleanup, stabilization, and least but not last, sound editing, sound mixing, and sound design. We really want to make this film uh, international, and we will be glad to cooperate with the international distributors and companies to make this wish a reality. Thank you very much and good luck. Sadece de de
هاك تشاخ بيتنا كل ما ما كان في احد هون هون خراب كان اي فوق كنا مو انا كريتون ابي تقول في هونك مشايخ بيقضي هونك هاك المش بيت قال صار نسل لي نسل لي وادخل جنيات تجوا لين جنيات تجوا لين قالوا ليش تجوا هون ليش تجوا بيناتنا شاخاكي اروا فرسة قالوا حج احمد قصاب هوارا حج احمد قصاب هوارا حج احمد قصاب زي ابو ابونا كان قال شاخاكي قال هوارا جنيات كانت مسكونة قافلت كم طبعا جايات كانوا شبكات كانوا قافلت كم واحد لين قال حول الجنية قالت حج احمد قصاب الله يسوي نابل أبواتنا شكرا له أولادنا ترى أبو أبواتنا كيقولوا لنا كيقولوا هاك الكفر أنا ما كريت الدنيا لفيقة ما في شيء هاك طلع تخربوا الراس الهلك ولاي كلها بس قلعة كيقولوا لنا قربوها وفي ما أعرف ما كان كما قبل قبلوا يخربوا افار وكان يقتلوا الدنيا ما كان ما كان يقبلوا ايه الدنيا ما كان يقبلوا انا هاكك سمعتهم I'm Agnes Horvátszabó, producer from Elf Pictures, Hungary. In this country, neither refugees are welcomed, nor migration-related films are supported. Still, when I heard about the fabulous life of Erve, a refugee from the Ivory Coast, I committed myself to the project four years ago. In this film's case, we can witness a reversed migrant journey, one that starts in Europe and leads to Africa. I heard about Hervé from Gabriel Babsi, an Italian traveller who met Hervé in 2012, on the day when Hervé entered Greece illegally. This is the eighth years in the making of this film, which is shot in Greece, Macedonia, the Ivory Coast, speaking in French, recorded by an Italian, producers from Hungary and Romania, just floating without a real home, just as its protagonists. By now, we have a 70-minute picture lock film, and we are looking for support to finish the post-production. We also look for sales agents, festivals, and broadcasters. Before watching the teaser, Gabriel Babsi offers his statement on the film, Motherland. Herbe has never hidden anything from me. My camera recorded everything. I spent days walking with him along the railroads, during the secret tracks to Serbia. I was there 
when his Greek girlfriend gave birth to their son and they accompanied Hervé to his father's funeral back to Africa. Hervé's fight for a better future was evident from the moment we met, regardless of the legal and moral obstacle that stood in his way. His struggle was given significance through the camera. Documenting his journey has allowed him to become somebody and I, simply by understanding him, have become his accomplice. I was following Hervé for six years. He's still fighting the trauma of war and the loss of his African family. He navigates his way through a moral minefield, trying to deal with his ever-changing life. I, being free without a job or a family, never chasing money or a career, have allowed myself to be absorbed by Hervé's own reality. I want to raise difficult questions. What is morality when you have no choices? What is ethical when you have no rights? Can we be judged? And if so, by whom? In this view, I would like to guide the viewer through the plethora of human experiences, showing paradoxical faces of Hervé throughout his film. As we proceed, Hervé's figures get more complex, contradictions form coherency. The aim is to vanquish labels such as good and bad choices or actions by the end of the film. So we need to come to the conclusion that we are not in the position to judge. Ils voient la beauté en surface de la Grèce. Mais dans les rues, c'est différent. Hervé, ralentis un peu, j'en peux plus là. C'est vrai que tu fais un documentaire, c'est intéressant pour tout le monde, mais j'ai pas envie de me faire prendre par la police une seconde fois ici. Tu veux me suivre, tu suis mon rythme. Parce que là, à ton rythme là, je vais pas arriver dans le village. À... La nuit, on va arriver la journée et ce ne sera pas bon pour moi. Voilà. Tous ceux qui m'ont suivi, les autres fois, quand ils marchent lentement, je les abandonne. Je n'ai pas le temps de me faire prendre. Donc tu me suis, si tu peux. Est-ce qu'il y a des vidéos de vie Vous Mais qu'est-ce qui s'est passé Tu dois tout faire pour être présent. 
qui t'a demandé de nous de, de déporter. Toutes mes petites soeurs sont là. Mmh. Bon, elle m'a dit, c'est pas possible. La tradition veut que je voie le corps de mon père. Je dois voir le corps de mon père. C'est très sincère, le merci. Tout à l'heure, Makanaki parlait des derniers dons. S'il y a encore un don à faire, on peut le faire. Cependant, il est bon de rappeler l'important don du ministre qui avait travaillé. On peut tout d'abord réceptionner. Hello, let me introduce you Jakub Juleni, the director, and my name is Barbara Janiszewa Fegova, and I'm producer of The Commune, which is a portrait of a group of outsiders, people around 70, who live in the margin of society and coping with some unsolved issues from their past, meaning the years of normalization in former Czechoslovakia. I'm personally interested in the point of view of young generation and the way they feel and face the consequences of this heritage. Hello, I've been always fascinated by hippie and underground movement which exists in all cultures. So I found a group of people who inclinated in those movements in small town of Košice in Slovakia during the 80s. They were producing very unique music, visual arts and poetry. Uh, I was very interested uh, why the regime uh, was so afraid of their activities. Although there was just 10 of them, uh, the state secret police got collaborators in between them. Uh, I focus rather on consequences of those activities nowadays. Those people, this group is so atomized and our heroes are suffering uh, kind of loneliness, existential problems. So I rather focused on this than just the romantic point of their activities during the 80s. Uh, I am using kind of surrealist animations because surrealism was very common creative principle among them. We are also using archives to compare the mainstream communist culture and the culture they were trying to produce and uh, and I hope you will see those principles in our teaser. Uh, we are at the final stage of editing with few more weeks uh, ahead in um, editing room. Our plan is to complete the film at the end of September and to have the local uh, premiere at the beginning of uh, December. There's nothing arranged yet regarding festivals and sales, so we are looking for them. Uh, I hope you'll join our teaser and uh, to meet some of you later. Thank you for your attention. My sme si aj robili srandu, my sme ho volali guru. Nejakým podivným spôsobom stále ma pravdu. Tiež sa ho asi hodne báli. Určite to chceli zlikvidovať. Zrejme im vadilo vôbec, že človek rozmýšľa nejako hlbšie a slobodnejšie. Tady vznikla mladá generácia, ktorá prehodnotila všetky hodnoty.
to nebyl jenom takový banální generační protest, to byl radikální proces. Ostrov slobody len v lese bol. To bolo aj tu, ale všetky stoly mali uši. No. V akcii Komúna je rozpracované undergroundové zoskupenie nás z Košic, ktoré sa prejavuje činnosťou v oblasti voľné mládeže. Nikdy neskúšame. Po nahrávaní jednoducho vyberieme to, čo sa nám páči. Samozrejme, že žiadnu skladbu nevieme a hlavne nechceme hrať druhý krát. Pro tu tajnou komunistickou policii to bylo naprosto nesrozumitelné. To bylo jak když přilít na UFO. Jednotliví členovia nás v minulosti nosili, alebo to posiel, ešte nosiel dlhé vlasy a na vonok pôsobia dojmom hippies. A nemusel to byť niekto z nás. Bol to niekto ja neviem, z nás, ja hovorím. Ty si to četl? Ne, to četl? Áno, nemu, nemus, nehovoríme, že nemusel. Ja hovorím, že bol to niekto že bol z nás. To, áno. Moja prvá manželka na mňa donášala štátnej bezpečnosti. Bral som to tak, že to urobila, že urobili na ňu šialený náklad. Ja som bol vždy pokojený pri tých výsluchoch. Pravdu som im hovoril. Vlastne človek hovoril pravdu a, a oni si s tou pravdou nevedeli poradiť. A Šveker, podplukovník bol ešte tebe. Počkaj, tvoj svokor? Hej. Ja? No. Joj, no táto... No to je potom jasné, že vybrali ma tak... Nabehli dvaja, gorili a zjeba. Decko ti môže sa stať mu nehoda, alebo čo? Že cez deti, hej, no deti apelov. Hej, strašné. We are happy to have opportunity to present our film to the public for the first time on this great platform. Uh, our project is time-lapse documentary that, that has a very long tradition in Czech Republic and uh, it's directed by a very well experienced filmmaker Martin Maracic. It's a six feature length documentary. The film is produced by production company Vernes in co-production with HBO and is supported by Czech Film Fund. Why did I want to do this film? We are living in a time when society is taking a completely new approach to what it means to be a man or a woman. Our protagonist is a public figure. He is a public intellectual, a well-known film critic with a large following. Uh, and uh, he is a committed feminist. On the other hand, he is a bodybuilder. He takes pride in the masculine body and does not hesitate to use anabolic steroids to exaggerate it. At first, the film was intended to be a documentary about this change, like Super Size Me. But over the years it became a documentary about the inner transformation and broadly about the transformation of gender roles in our society. I love the logline the director came up with. It's a film about men who wanted to become a superman and instead became a gender man. He won this prize in Czech Republic. We started to produce this film when Kamil was 35 and we finished shooting this year at his 40th birthday celebration. Kamil wanted to fulfill his dream and ambition of taking anabolic steroids and finally to become mature, to start a family, to become a freelancer who could manage his own life. Everything of course went differently and it's a question if this was for good or bad. Kamil's decision to stop taking steroids, and of course he felt the same, was a change for the better. Kamil embodies many of the paradoxes that define our time, and for me as a filmmaker it was important to closely observe both what he as a character says and what he does. As he is a social media influencer, I also explored the dynamic between the way he presents himself and how he acts privately. As you could hear, there are tabloid topics in our film, but Martin as a filmmaker has a gentle and I would even say intimate approach to his characters, so our audience can't expect anything like social porno. Uh, they could expect a very intimate approach. Uh, the empathy is the key for us.
Hello, my name is Stanisław Zaborowski, and together with the directors Janna Ratajczak, we would like to present you project Trust Me. Alicia and Sebastian are the perfect couple for the 21st century. They have everything. Happy and loving relationship, money, two lovely children and a large circle of friends. But Sebastian wants more, so he proposes a risky experiment. After 15 years together, he surprises his wife with a radical change to open up a relation to other partners and the couple embark on the turbulent journey with the outcome uncertain. For a long time, I accompanied Alicia and Sebastian on their bold, tenacious and sometimes destructive search for the new kind of love. Over time, it becomes clear how difficult it is to leave a path of the conventional relationship and how difficult it is to talk about our own real needs, even with our own partner. Trust Me is not only a film about infidelity and an open relationship. It becomes very quickly a psychological study of all our heroes and their relationships, as well as a um, psychological study of the relationship between women and men today. This is a very intimate story of a couple looking for a new recipe for love, uncompromising, conscious and open. During almost surgical work with camera and microphone, we observe a millimeter slow changes in the nature of their relationship. And in the end, we ask a universal question, whether in the 21st century, in the world of consumption, temptation and being available all the time, a long lasting monogamous love relation still has its raison d'etre. The project is at the production stage and was evolving during development lab in Vida School last year, where it was highly recommended by Marcel Wojcicki. We already shoot 10 days and we are planning 30 more this summer. The estimated budget of our film is 200,000 euro. The post-production of the film is planned for the second half of 2021. Currently, we have a big interest from our partners. In May, we applied to Chicken and Egg and Sundance Found. The Polish distributor Dogs Against Gravity is interested to organize the premiere in Warsaw. Financial support was declared by Television RB in Germany. Now we are waiting for a decision from the Polish Film Institute. Currently, we are looking for a sales agent and co-producers. Thank you very much for your time. Öffnet sanft eure Augenlider und begegnet eurem Gegenüber. ob ich nicht Angst habe, dass die Familie kaputt geht. Just 
strach ma wielkie oczy, że coś wydaje ci się w teorii takie niemożliwe, a nagle jak się wydarza, to okazuje się nie takie straszne. My name is Ksenia Gabchink. I am documentary director and producer from Russia. Next to me is Max Rodenka, Ukrainian documentarist. And now Max is working on his second feature length documentary under the working title Elevation. Uh, I joined the project uh, quite recently because I couldn't resist the topic, um, uh, the film about a ski jumper who doesn't know how to land. And uh, together with us on board are Melinda Boris and Maria Kraus, um, our Romanian and Polish co-producers. Uh, I am giving word to Max. Please tell us um, about Vasil and his elevation. Hello, everybody. Uh, several years ago, I met uh, uh, Vasil, a professional ski jumping coach. He is a former ski jumper. Uh, now, in his uh, 70s, uh, he works uh, at a sports school in a tiny village in the uh, heart of uh, Carpathian Mountains. Vasil is uh, training kids in conditions which are really far from excellent. He is fighting for his dreams and uh, ideals uh, very passionately. Vasil is trying to change uh, the bureaucratic system uh, due to the lack uh, of financing a small ski jumping school and ski jumping hill are under the danger of shooting down. Uh, he is uh, the only one who keep uh, who could who could keep uh, these uh, facilities alive. Uh, despite uh, the difficulties, uh, Vasil stu Vasil's students are uh, getting into uh, European competitions. So everything sounds like uh, Vasil is a real hero, but there is something controversial about him. He is his own antagonist, um, modern Sisyphus. So um, his goals are vague and he is very alone and strange in, in Carpathians. He is twice the words and he is having a conflict uh, with his son, who is also a coach and um, he's a, his son is a part of the bureaucratic system uh, which Vasil hates so much. So uh, his students are leaving him, but still Vasil is dreaming of something big. So I think it's documentary, uh, visually very exciting, but also has many layers. And financial wise, we didn't log the budget yet, uh, and we're looking for funds, pre-sales, um, because uh, as for me, being producer attached to this movie, I'm deeply convinced that um, the film is worth your attention. Thank you so much. Давай. Молодец! Жодина трамплін на Україні не відповідає тим нормам для спортсмена, щоб могли стрибати в Європі в світі. Це наші верховинські спортсмени за цей рік були учасниками чемпіонату світу в Америці. Таким я був молодим, видиш, спортсмен. Ти не скачив самоліт, але ти ж там тебе техніка не 
Бачите, плоское ухо не закручено. Это для того, чтобы повитря не зупинялось. В 1981 году я достал травму, и меня было вышибло. Женька, ой-ой-ой, где моя квиточка? Вот такой молодец. Я на пугали, что вы научились. Добрый, добрый молодец. Антон, мне все понравилось, но мне не голову, голова туда. Двадцать два метра, а третий двадцать пять. Там дочка, что твои могла не ожидать. Это 